Good, good evening, God's people. Why don't we stand and we can open with prayer. We welcome every one of you. It's nice, it's good to be in the house of God. Praise the Lord. I just have a couple of verses I would like to read before we pray. And um, it says in Hebrew, it says, <clears throat> Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And then he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand, <coughs> right hand of the throne of God. So this evening we we're looking unto God. He is the author of the, our faith, and uh, we. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith, believing that Jesus Christ <coughs> died for our sins, and has forgiven our sins, and we are forgiven today, and we are the children of God, and that takes faith to believe that, and uh, so let us look unto unto Jesus, the author and our finisher of our faith. And uh, in this wilderness journey that we live in, surrounded by problems of life, but nevertheless, he is with us. And uh, he's here with us this evening. See what God has for us through his message as we worship the Lord. So why don't we just open with prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, we put this meeting in your hands this evening, Lord. We pray for those that are still traveling from work, from home, from, from things. Father, they, uh, they're traveling to be here with us. We pray for those that are home watching on TV, Lord. Father, we pray that you bless them. Pray that you bring the family of God under this roof here safely, Lord. And those at home also, Father. And Father, this evening also we pray for so many of our family members that are going through very hard times, Lord. Many afflictions, maybe many of our, uh, our brethren are going through hard times in life. I pray, Lord, that you would extend your hand of mercy, that you would extend your hand of mercy, you touch them, Lord. You know everyone by name, Lord. Pray that you touch them, you bless them, Lord. Encourage them, Father. We pray also for Pastor Mike. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> this affliction that comes upon him, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we just come against it, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless our pastor, his family, Lord. And Father, you have your way this evening. As they lead us in worship, Lord, we want to do our part. We want to worship you, Lord, with our hearts. You gave us a mouth to worship you, Lord. You gave us hands to lift them up to you, Lord. Father, we, we just put this meeting in your hands and speak to our lives, Father. Through whoever is speaking the message tonight, we want to receive it with joy and gladness, Father. Bless your people, Father. We pray, Father, in Jesus Christ. Amen. Singing and shackled me The God who never heard my peace Jesus, Jesus, rescue me Jesus, Jesus, rescue me I'm a saint forever With your love gone down With my hands to heaven Shout your praise I was lost in darkness When you pulled me out I will sing forever, but we love come down. Your grace so soon, it floods my soul. And hope eternal won't let go. My dead in the race, I'm in Calvary. Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. It's Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. I'm a saint forever, I love God. With my hands to heaven, chant your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I was sinful and never left gone down. There's a home beyond the sky. There's a home beyond the sky. A song will sing for all of time. The grave is in. I am free. Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. I will sing forever, let your love come down. With my hands to heaven, praise is loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever, let your love come down. I will sing forever, never come down with my hands to heaven, shout your praise. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever, never love come down. I will sing forever, never love come down. Jesus is my Savior, I shall not be moved. In his love and favor, I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Glory to Jehovah, I shall not be moved. Singing hallelujah, I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. God is always with me. God is always with me. I shall not be moved. Loving me completely, I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be, I shall not be moved, I shall not be, I shall not be moved, I'm like a tree that's planted by the water, I shall One more time. not be moved, I shall not be, I shall not be moved, oh, I shall not be, I shall not be moved, I'm like a tree that's planted by the water. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between Where we used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There's another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters He's holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding Of how I've been so free There's a cross that bears the burden Or another died for me There's another in the fire Dead is dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between What remains of me and the strengthening Either way I'm about 
to the things of this world. I know I'll never be alone. There's another way in the fire standing next to me. There's another way in the waters that's holding back the seas. Should I ever need a mind? I will set me free. There's a grave that holds my body. Now the power is in me. There's another in the fire. thank you God for being with us Lord through everything we don't deserve it Lord God we're sometimes like babies Lord but Lord you know where we're at each one of us God you know the things that we go through Lord the things that we bring on ourselves and the things Lord the attacks that come on on us Lord and God you don't hold it against us Lord you're reaching out to your children constantly you love us You extend your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. Thank you for not giving up on us, Lord. Thank you for staying with us, Lord. Thank you for being faithful, Lord. 
We just worship you tonight and give you, Lord, the recognition that you deserve, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't you uh, greet somebody close to you there? Ah, good evening, family of God. Praise the Lord. I like that last song. There's another in the fire. Praise God. Reminds me of my working days. <laughs> but all kidding aside, that was, that was really a nice song. I really enjoyed that. Um, two announcements uh, for tonight. They were shared, uh, I believe, uh, this past uh, Sunday morning. And the first is uh, Daylight Savings Time ends uh, this Saturday. Actually, yeah, uh, Sunday. And Sunday, about 2 o'clock in the morning. So be sure to set your clocks back an hour Saturday night. So set the clock back Saturday night. Spring forward, fall back. So we gain an hour. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm always for that. I'm always for gaining that hour. Uh, unfortunately, with that, then, we also have uh, shortened days. So uh, but I'll take it anyways. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So um, then the second announcement, we've been announcing that, is uh, the movie. And that'll be this coming Monday. It's at uh, Regal Theater at the Ontario Mail, just off of 4th Street. Uh, Sabina, and the movie starts at uh, 7 o'clock. So I'm not sure if uh, any of you are making plans to get together before and have uh, something to eat before you go to the movies, or maybe do that afterward. But just food for thought. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that. Uh, uh, that's it for the announcements, but on a personal side, I just wanted to let the body know that uh, for the next uh, eight weeks approximately, my wife and I will not be here attending service. Uh, tomorrow, I'm scheduled to have uh, surgery, and so during uh, the times of meeting, I'll be home, uh, hopefully uh, rehabilitating and recuperating. So that'll be about eight weeks. Uh, I'll miss uh, being here. I'll miss uh, seeing the smiling faces through the masks of my brethren, but uh, just something that we felt it was uh, time to do. And so tomorrow um, uh, that'll take place. And so, again, approximately eight weeks, uh, we're not going to be here. So Lord bless you where you are, and uh, Lord bless me where I am. <laughs> Praise the Lord, because we know that he loves to do that. Amen, God's people. Amen. So that's it as far as um, announcements. And I'm going to uh, dismiss the young people to their class and call uh, Brother Eddie forward. Brother Eddie, thank you. Praise the Lord. Jesus is here. <laughs> We're going to look at uh, Luke chapter 10. So once more, I just want to welcome everybody who came. I know that uh, sometimes it's difficult to come, but when you do come, God, God sees that, and, and I believe he's well pleased. And also those who are online, we, we thank you that you have tuned in. So uh, let's, let's start reading from chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 1. And after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place <coughs> where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest, send out laborers into the harvest. Go your way. 
<coughs> Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bags, knapsacks, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as, as they give you. For the labor is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. And whatever, they, <coughs> whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as they set, <coughs> that are set before you. And heal the sick there. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you, that it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. And woe to you, Chorazim. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works <coughs> which were done in, your, in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven will be brought down to Hades. And he who hears you hears me. And he who rejects you rejects me. And he who re rejects me rejects him who sent me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, we, we come to you in Jesus' name, Lord. And once more, Lord, as we look into your word, I pray that you open our hearts to your word, Lord, that you reveal to us in a greater measure, Lord, what your words mean to us in these days that we live in. Once more, Lord, we pray for those who are afflicted, Lord, that you would that you would touch them even now. Your word says that your arm is not shortened, that you cannot reach them, Father. And you know their affliction. Would you pay for Pastor Mike, that you would touch him and heal him, not only heal him, Father, but you had blessing with good health. Once more, Lord, we pray for those who are in mourning, Lord, and grieving, Lord. You comfort them also, Lord. Once more, Lord, your word says that you see them and that you know them, Lord. You know exactly what they're going through and what they're feeling, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, draw them close to you, Lord. Help them to know that you do care what's taking place in their life. So once more, Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord. I pray that you, you help me, Lord, even to look at these scriptures, that my brethren here would, would uh, reap some of these things, Father, and they would cause growth in their life. We just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And it says, after these things, the Lord pointed 70 others also and sent them out two by two. This account of Jesus calling the saving disciple is unique to the Gospel of Luke. Uh, the instructions, or the commandments, if you will, Jesus gave to the disciples are similar to those in uh, chapter 9 of Luke. Let's just take a look at that, since it's just close by. Chapter 9. And then it says from verse 1, it says, Then he called out his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, do not have two tunics apiece. Whatever house you enter, stay there, and from there depart. And whoever will not 
receive you when you go out of that city. Shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. <coughs> if, you, uh, if you look into the, the Gospels, you'll, you're going to find that uh, this, these uh, similar commands or instructions are given out throughout the Gospel in Matthew and, and Mark and Luke, of course. So, I, I, I wrote something down here. Okay, here. It, is. it, says, uh, it says here in uh, chapter 9 and uh, in verse 51. Now it came to pass the time had come for him to receive up that his steadfast set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face. When you look into the Gospels, one of the things I find is that, uh, as you look at the, at the word, there's always someone going before Jesus. And I, quite frankly, I never noticed that until I really studied it. But Jesus sent someone forth always before he went to that place. I think that's, that's very important to understand that. Maybe we'll look at it a little bit later on here. <clears throat> it says, uh, it says here, uh, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest, send out laborers for his harvest, <coughs> for his harvest. Uh, the picture of a plentiful harvest suggests that uh, there was going to be a positive response from the <coughs> that awaited the laborers, even in the face of rejection. One of the things that I find is that uh, there's always this, I always hear people say, I'm not afraid to go out and share the gospel. I, I hear that. But a lot of times, I know when I go out to share the gospel with someone, a little fear comes in. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's rejection. You know, maybe, maybe we don't want to be rejected. We always want to feel that everybody's going to receive us. But that's not true. They, re, they rejected Jesus. They rejected some of the disciples that went out. These 70 went out two by two. They were rejected. <clears throat> And this harvest, I was, uh, I put down here, uh, <clears throat> this would be about, uh, wow, 40 years ago. It was in the 70s. In the 70s when there was a great Jesus movement. Maybe some of you weren't born then, I'm sure. <laughs> but it was a great Jesus movement. And I persecuted People who said they love Jesus. I mean, I didn't like beat them up or anything, but uh, you know, I gave them a bad time. Always gave them a bad time. And uh, <clears throat> but when I received Jesus Christ in my life, things changed. So we were at uh, at a Bible study at Pastor's house, Pastor Ray's house, and we're, we were well, 40 years ago. Or how many years that? That's 50 years ago. <laughs> yeah, 50 years ago. We were there, and there was a group of young believers. But this one believer, his name was, I don't know, if you know I don't know if anybody, maybe Frank may know him. His name was Connie Bellis. And he stood up, and we were having this Bible study, and he says, I had a dream, I think or a vision, and we were like, all, all like, what are you talking about, you know, you know, you know young believers, you know, you're kind of like, you want to be careful with everything that's being said, you know, you don't want to go down some road or be led some way, but he said, I had this vision, I was in a wooden boat, and I had a roar, uh, uh, what do they call those, an oar, 
an oar in each of my hand, he said. And I was rowing, he said. And I was rowing on this great uh, field of wheat. And I was rowing. And then Pastor says, he says, that's the great harvest. And I, I always thought about that. And he says, you're rowing out to, to people who need to hear the gospel. And I, I thought that, that was so beautiful. So I, I don't like to talk about it, but I used to work at one time. And, uh, <laughs> but I had to fly up to Kansas, and I had to fly into Wichita. When I flew in there, I asked the lady where I got my rental car, because <clears throat> I had to go to this plant, and they, had, you know, they wanted me to do some things, look at some stuff. At any, any rate, so I told the lady at the counter, I, I want to make sure I don't get lost here because I've never been here before. She kind of laughed. She said, when you go out, you make a left turn, that's a road right there. You go to that road, you make a right turn. You, you won't get lost. <laughs> In those days, we didn't have the GPS 50 years ago. <laughs> didn't have no such thing as that. So I was going down this highway, and I noticed there was nobody on the highway but me. So <laughs> I saw... The, one car passed me by, he waved at me. I, I waved back. <laughs> so I kept going. I had to go about 80 miles. 80 miles to this, it's like my first in Kansas. And um, so I looked to the side and I saw this big machine. It was like cutting this, the wheat. This big columbine, I think it's called. It's cutting this wheat. And the guy waved at me and I waved back, you know, like he knew me. <laughs> but it was I was driving. <clears throat> That thought came to my mind, how Connie Bella shared about this here rowing on, on the field of wheat. And I looked on the wheat, because if you've been to Kansas, that is flat. There are no bumps. There are no hills. They're just, just flat. And this whole thing was nothing but wheat. And I was driving along, and I saw this. The wind would go across, and the wheat would go like this, like a wave. And I thought of Connie Vellis when he shared that. How, that. how that was so beautiful. And I remembered him. And I believe God used him that many come to new Christ through him. So he went out, if you will, into the harvest and brought in, brought in that, that, you know, the, the good product, the lives. He saved, you know, God used him greatly. He used him greatly in my life. So at any rate, <coughs> this... this this great harvest we have is still here. The harvest is still here. Uh, it's still here. And it says that he, uh, as I go through, it says, uh, I will send you out among the lambs, like lambs among the wolves. You know, a lot of times we go out innocently trying to bring the gospel, share the good news to people. Innocently, we want to do the right thing. But there are people out there who are going to be against us. And they're going to, uh, maybe for a better word, they're going to hate us. They're going to hate what you're going to proclaim. And they may, may try to do some violent things towards you. Because I, I myself know that I did not do good things against them some Christians before I became a Christian. <clears throat> so, so, Jesus is kind of trying to get them to <laughs> realize what they're going to do here. And it says here, uh, let's see. He says, uh, carry neither money bags, knapsacks, sandals, or greet no one along the road. <clears throat> what are home you enter? Uh, First, say, peace to the house. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> this, this commandment, if you will, is like instructions. It's made for easier traveling. <laughs> and it encourages the disciples to trust God for their food and the shelter, which faithful <laughs> Jewish hearers would heed, heed their teaching and would provide for them. That is that's very true. There are there are people who are open, who are open to you, you know, and they 
They are the people you don't think are open. I don't know how to explain that other than that. It's not someone you, the perfect person is going to be the guy that accepts the Lord. It doesn't work that way. God has to work on their hearts. That's that harvest God's talking about. This harvest God's talking about is that he wants us to go out Reap the harvest. Because he says the harvest is, is ready. I can't think of a, a better time than now that we live in. The world is upside down. I mean, <laughs> the other day me and a brother were talking about some politics things, and I said, wow. I said, man, this, this is really in really bad shape. I mean, <laughs> I said, man, we, we went from all right they're now really bad. <laughs> I don't know, I may be exaggerating, but that's, that's very true, I think. There's some things that are not, not even close to being right anymore. They're not even close to being right. <clears throat> that's why my, my really concern is for the young, young adults. I have to share with you, I have a, a two, two young, uh, I have a lot of <laughs> young grandchildren. And they're, they're adult age. But their thoughts are not the same thoughts I have. They think some things are all right. So when you have that kind of uh, mentality in you, you think it's all right. It's, as long as it doesn't bother me, it's not hurting, it's all right. But what happens, you have to make a stand. You have to make a stand in these days to tell them it's not right. That kind of thinking with that kind of support. And what happens, that, it drives a wedge. A lot of times we don't want that wedge to come between us and our family members. I know that. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know that that's one of the issues with our family. But nevertheless, we're gonna serve the Lord. <laughs> I tell I them, we're gonna serve the Lord. Whatever the cost is, it's okay. Lord knows what it's going to cost. I said, but in the end, I said, you're going to know that we're going to serve the Lord. So let me, let me, don't let me get off here. <clears throat> so what happens in this, this says, don't greet anyone along the way. It's very important. <clears throat> it has to do with your obedience. When someone gives you instructions to do and you don't do it, what does that mean? You're disobedient. He says, don't greet anyone along the way. And what happens, a lot of times I know, when, if we go out to uh, stay, if we go someplace to, to speak the word of God or something like that, you know, do the work for the Lord, there's always something to distract us to get us going a different way. So <clears throat> I think it's important to understand that it's like, it's like a very minor thing, but I think it's very important. People say, yeah, I know that. He says, they say, I know that. I won't never do that. That's what Peter said. He said a lot of things he said he would never do it. He did just the opposite. So we, we have to be careful in these days. So <clears throat> uh, let's turn to Second Kings. Maybe just to just to take a look at this this uh, not doing something that we're told not to do, not to greet anybody along the way. Second Kings, chapter uh, chapter four. This, this talked about a, a Shulamite woman who didn't have a son and she had a son and the prophet said she would have a son and, and then he got sick and he died. And, and at any rate, <coughs> let, me, let me start here. It says, uh, We can start from, uh, well, let's see, how, how do we do that here? Okay. All 
Okay, let's start from verse 11. Chapter 4, 2 Kings, chapter 4, verse 11. And it happened one day that he came there and turned into the upper room and laid down. Then he said to Gazai, his servant, Call the Shulamite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said to her, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, What then is to be done for you, her? Gezai said, Answer, Actually she has no son, and her husband is old. So he said, Call her. When he called her, she stood in the doorway. And he said, About this time next year you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, in which Elisha had told her. And the child grew. And now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to, <coughs> to the reapers. And he said to his father, My head, my head. So he said to the servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knee until noon, and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. <clears throat> then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. She said, It is well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. So she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. <clears throat> so it was when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to his servant, Gezegai, Look, the Shulamite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, It is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the, by the feet. Gezehi came near t to push her away, but the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is deep in distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, Did I ask a son of my, of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gezehi, Get yourself ready, and take my staff from your hand, and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. If anyone greets you, do not answer him. But lay my staff on the face of the child. You get a chance, you can read the outcome. This is good. This is a good outcome here. But you see, Elijah gave him a command says that don't meet anybody. If you meet anybody, don't greet them. Don't, don't be busybody with them. There's work to be done. Go get that work done. So he did that. So I believe that's what Jesus was telling these, these uh, disciples here, you know. Hey, we got work. Don't, don't be messing around. Have you, have, have you ever had people work for you? And, you know, we've got a task to do. And the first thing they want to do, they want to go get coffee. <laughs> I got to go get my gloves. I got to go talk to my, my, you know, let me call my mom or something. I said, okay. <laughs> so I, <laughs> at any rate, let's go on. <clears throat> it says here, uh, okay. It says, uh, and it says, you know, <laughs> to greet the household. In verse 5 and 6, was to pronounce a blessing on it. You're supposed to say, peace to you. The disciples were to assume that the, the best of their hosts when they arrived. However, if the home proved to be unworthy, 
The occupants rejected the message of the disciples. The disciples were to remove the pronouncement of blessing. Sometimes, uh, I myself don't ever do that. Do you ever do that? I, hey, peace be with you. I, I, maybe I should do that. It says, uh, because the testimony of the disciples were at stake, they were to seek out the homes with good reputations. Furthermore, they were not to be constantly trying to find a more desirable residence. Have you gone to a hotel and you say, oh, I don't think I like this place. <laughs> I want something better. But what we fail to realize, there's people sleeping out in the streets. They're homeless. You know, sometimes we just don't know what the blessings are we have. You know, I, I, I probably, I don't know if I ever told you this. I'm, I'm sure I did. I, I like to use it all the time. There was this guy in the desert, and he, was, he got lost. And he didn't have no provisions to get throughout the day, right? So he's out there, and he doesn't have anything to drink. Doesn't have nothing to drink. And I think you can only go three days. Is that right? Three days without water? And then you, know, you flop over and start kicking or something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but you, you, I know it's pretty bad. You can't, don't have water. So at any rate... <clears throat> This guy, uh, so this bunch of these guys were just, they were hiking. They saw me. Hey, are you okay? He kind of, you know. He says, man, you need some water. He says, so they brought him some water. He says, I don't want water. I want a Coke. <laughs> he said, what? We don't have a Coke. But guess what happened to that guy? <laughs> what I'm saying to you is that sometimes, when we have some good shelter and we think it's not good enough, we've got to remember God is the one who provides that shelter for us. He provides the very food on the table. So we have to have this gratitude. That's why a lot of times when, when I have the opportunity to go to Mexico, I go there and I see the, the, the poverty level. It's extremely bad. I mean, some of us have been there. I mean, I remember... I, I've told this, I'll tell it again. And, 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 and Sister Emma and you know, some of the sisters have been there. You know, some of the sisters have been there. We're standing on rubble, like trash. And the trash is like burning. <laughs> and we're praising God. That's all, that's all we had. It's, 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 it's heartbreaking. That sometimes, when I came home, I, that particular time when I came home, and I went home, and I could turn on the water. It was cold water. Turn the other one, it was hot water. They don't even have that. They don't even, they don't even have water, man. It was, it was heartbreaking. So, praise the Lord. So, so Jesus told me, hey, don't, be, don't be looking for other places. You know, you go to a place, they got, got you there, that's good. You stay there. A lot of times we want to, I know a lot of times we want to, do that, you know, and then it says there when you go to the places like that, they always want to give you something to eat, and that that, that works sometimes, you know. I know that uh, I, I, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll tell you two examples. I was in Mexico, and we came back, and they said, hey, We're gonna stop at this taco place. Oh, great, man, man, you know how they all that, yeah, it was. I think they got the best tacos there. But they said, man, you need to eat one of these. These, and it's one of those, those onions that has a big round ball on the end and has a green stock on it, and it's pickled. So, <laughs> so, so they said, you need to eat one. I said, okay, I'll. I ate it, and boy, did I get sick. <laughs> so next time I went, Eddie, you want to get I said, I, I think I'm gonna, I think I'll pass on that one. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of comical, but. When you get sick, you know, you, you don't want to get sick again. So I, I, I think, Lord, forgive me, but I don't think I'm going to have this onion. <laughs> uh, you don't, I don't know, uh, some of the older saints know, uh, Sister Margaret and Sister Gill, uh, we used to go over the house quite a bit. And uh, so one day, you know, Eddie, come on, sit down, we've got to eat manudas. Oh, okay. 
So I sat down, and I was talking, and I turned around, and there's this big bowl, and the bowl of manudo. I was okay, but the only thing wrong with it, it had this big foot in it. <laughs> and I, 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 I kind of looked around, and I said, well, <laughs> that's not for me, is it? <laughs> I kind of looked at it, and I said, oh, boy. I, told, I, told, I said, to him, hey, Francis, you want to eat this? <laughs> Hey, I, t I, I told her, hey, Sister Margaret says, I, I can't eat this. <laughs> I said, is it, is it, is it, is it not enough? I said, no. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. No, no. I said, no, I just, I'm not really that hungry. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to get on here. Yeah, oh, Lord, forgive me. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, okay. So, anyway, we... <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, we, we go down to this, uh, we look down here, it says, uh, <coughs> okay. And heal the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. And whatever city you enter, they, and they do not receive you, go out in the street and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know that this the kingdom of God has come near you. <laughs> but I say to you, it will be more tolerable in that day <laughs> for Sodom than for, for that city. <clears throat> so, I, I wrote this down. I, I'm sure it has something to do with it, but let's turn to Mark chapter, Mark chapter 3. I don't know. Sometimes I, when I do a, a Bible study, I'll mark a lot of things down, and I don't know if it really pertains to the <laughs> study. Because I, you know, I don't know about you. I I can't like sit down like an hour or two. I got to get up, walk around, do something. <laughs> My wife always has me to do something. I always got something I got to do. Got to blame her for something. Uh, anyway, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bring me, Lord. And it says, <laughs> I'll say, uh, Mark chapter 3, and it, we can start from 13, read here. And he went up on the mountain and called to him, to him those he himself wanted. And they came to him, that he appointed twelve, that they might be with him, that he might send them out to preach. See, here he gets, he sends them out to preach, and to have power to heal the sick and to cast out demons. So one thing I realize is that when God sends us out, God empowers us. Sometimes maybe we, we don't use that empowerment. Somehow we kind of put it in the back seat. But God gives us the power to do that. You know, we have to believe in faith that when we pray for people that uh, they are afflicted, that God can heal them. You know, our... Our faith is to pray for them. It's not our, it's not our job to heal them. Sometimes sometime Christians believe because you pray for them, you're going to heal them. No, that doesn't work that way. We just do our part. We, we pray for them. And God does the healing. He's a great physician. He's, his word, he says he sees us. And he knows us. He knows exactly what we need. We just got to pray along those lines that God would heal those, those people. I don't know. Sometimes you ask them, why are they sick? Why are they afflicted? I don't know. But God God knows. God knows. You know, you think about uh, uh, Apostle, Apostle uh, Paul. He had this infirmity inside. He asked, he asked hey, take, take this out. Take this away from me. I think it's three times. <laughs> what was the answer? My, my grace is sufficient for you. Wow. Praise the Lord. So the Lord knows. I remember Pastor saying that that woman who got healed, her leg was messed up. She got healed, and the next time we heard about her, she was out dancing. She never came back to church, though. <laughs> I said, wow. Anyway, let's, let's go on, Lord. I, forgive me. I'm just not. Okay. 
So Jesus gave the disciples power to heal the sick. And this, uh, this is very important. This is the kingdom of God. This text that we read, this scripture we read, it says that the aspect of the kingdom authority accompanied to Jesus' earthly ministry. The healing brought a picture of what the kingdom offered. Jesus' ministry was the arrival of the initial stage of God's rule, which Jesus will consummate at his return. God's kingdom comes in stages. I, I believe that. You know, after reading, reading this, I read the, And then we can turn to uh, at Luke chapter 11. Or 17. I'm sorry. We talk about the kingdom of God here. <clears throat> Luke chapter 17, verse 20. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, The days will come when you'll desire to see one of the days of the Son of God, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of the one part of under heaven shines to the other part of under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by, the, by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the floods came and destroyed them all. Likewise, it was also in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I remember we were talking about Sodom, that uh, I don't remember seeing in any part, or maybe there are, I'm sure, maps that show where Sodom was, but I remember Pastor, Pastor Ray said that uh, there was an area, I forget exactly where it was, but where they thought Sodom might have been. But as they looked at, at the soil and the, and the earth, where it was, it was it was like, it was like dark, like something had burnt, burnt into the soil, into the dirt, all the way down. So, I don't think, I don't think they know exactly what happened to Sodom, other than what the word God says, fire and brimstone. I never thought about that, but that must have been one heck of a. Don't want to be close to that. So, what's interesting is that, remember when we first read about, <coughs> uh, here, let me go back just to, <coughs> it says that, now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up. You know, this is, this is the journey that Jesus was taken to Jerusalem. He was going to be crucified. That's why he said he's going to be taken up. This is what he was taking. It's going to happen. And he said he's, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face. I've heard that... Uh, when God is going to do something tremendous or something that's going to affect the people of God, 
God always sends a messenger to warn the people. To warn the people. So, almost, almost done. Almost done. So when Jesus came the first time, he was rejected. The second coming, he will be established his complete rule over all. <clears throat> Maybe we could turn to uh, Acts chapter 13, just to look at this, uh, the dust on our feet. Thirteen forty-nine. There's there's much more, but for the sake of time, we'll we'll try to keep it short here. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region, but the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women, and chief men of the city, and raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I'm just going to show you uh, show three instances of what I know about this. Is that, uh, remember that I told you about this Christian I <laughs> persecuted? Well, I, when I was working, uh, the job I had was like a, they call it a machine chief. I ran a machine, and these guys had to work for me. Anyway, this guy was always happy. <laughs> you know, when you're not a Christian, you're miserable. I, I, I was thinking about that. When I wasn't a Christian, I was always kind of like miserable, complaining, and, you know, not happy. You know, when some people are unhappy and they see some people happy, they don't like it. That was me. <laughs> I didn't like this guy. He was always happy. He, had like, he was always smiling. So one time he was like, hey, you know, and I went up, so I guess I was, just, I was a bad guy, man. I was just, that's all I was to it. I went up to him, and I grabbed him by the shirt, going to punch him out. I was so angry, he reached in his pocket, and he pulled out a Bible. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of like, whoa, what happened? I just, like, boom, I just stopped. So I... So I told, I told him, I says, uh, his name was Merrill, I, says, I, I, I told him like, a, I think a few years later, I says, I received Christ. He's the first guy who went to tell him, hey, Merrill, I received Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And he hugged me and everything. He says, Eddie, I've been praying for you for 15 years. Oh, man, I just, tears just rolled out my eyes. I said, Here, I beat this guy, I'm going to beat this guy up, called him all kinds of names, gave him bad time. Everything. I was, oh man, it was awful. I was awful, and he told me he had been praying for me for 15 years. <laughs> so, so I kind of, so, uh, so I was talking to him one day. He says, Eddie, sometimes I go out to evangelize. I, I go out to you know different neighborhoods or some places, you know, and sometimes we don't get treated very well. I said, oh yeah. <laughs> I said, oh okay. He said, what I do is that what we do, he said, they would go out two by two. He said, we go out on the side and go like this. I said, well, what? <laughs> we shake the dust off our feet. Oh, okay. I want to share a couple more incidents. Uh, Pastor Ray and Pastor Emmanuel, I don't know if they were pastors then, but they went out and evangelized in Northtown. And someone gave them a real hard time. Almost threw them out of the yard. <laughs> so you know what they did? You know what happened to those people? They got gravely sick. Something happened to them. When you reject Christ, something takes place in your life. They got gravely sick. I think, I think Pastor Emmanuel led them to the Lord. Some of you haven't been to the old, the old building where we came from, Cucamonga. We had a building. We, it was an old grocery store, I believe, in gas station. It was really pretty bad shape, but we tried to fix it up, and we were going with the city, trying to get a permit to have a church there, because, you know, you got to throw uh, all those ins and outs of getting things done. But the back of the church, the back of the building, that was the property line. 
So, like, this would be the end of the back of the church. The property line would run right against the back. So that the city said, you can't have a church because you don't have a parking lot. So we're wrangling with the, with the, with the city. So I guess some of the brothers went and talked to the people who had a lot right there. Hey, let's go ask them they want to sell the lot. And the guy gave them a real bad time. Very, you know, I didn't think he said some bad words and all that. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, blow it up, but some things were not right. <laughs> but the guy got sick. Almost, almost going to die. And I think they led him to, they went to pray to heal him, and he accepted Christ, I believe, and he sold the property to us. We, <laughs> that's how we were able to make the church there. Without that, we couldn't have a church. All I'm saying to you is that when you go out there and you do the things God wants you to do, you go out in the harvest and you share the word of God with someone and uh, they reject you, you can, you can do that. But I, 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 I'm kind of a little cautious because I don't want them to get hurt or anything like that. I've seen it happen. I mean, at where I work, I mean, a lot of people would come against me because I wouldn't, I wouldn't do what they wanted to do. That guy Merle, he'd been working rotating shift, I think, 25 years. He worked every five days. He had to work five days of straight days, one day off. Then he'd go to the graveyard, be off to two days, and he'd go to swing be off like another day and a half. He would do that all the time. And maybe get weekends off maybe 10 times a year. So when I became, uh, anyway, I got promoted. I told the Lord, I thought, I'm, I'm going to get Merle. <laughs> so I said, Merle, you coming to straight day working Monday through Friday. I said, buy all these shipping crates and bring them in there. Don't worry about it. Boy, I had the union come against me. You can't do it. He's, uh, he doesn't have enough seniority. I said, I don't care. I said, I'm going to still do it. <laughs> We good. He worked there until he quit. He retired. <laughs> the Lord made a way. So anyway, what I'm saying to you is, I, I, I mean, God is merciful. And I think a lot of times that we kind of do that, <laughs> we have to be careful, I think. I mean, that, if somebody is really doing some bad stuff, maybe. But I, I just got to use some wisdom there. So... <clears throat> The mighty works of Jesus were so great that if they had been performed before this, this worst pagan of all era, those people would have repented. Jesus' remarks was to, <clears throat> to wake the people up to what the rejection of him signified. Sometimes people don't realize when they reject Christ what actually takes place. They don't, they don't see themselves being in in this dark kingdom. They think they're all right. They think they're like they're walking the fence, but they're not. Like, like you, you know, you heard that. You, know, you accept Christ. Says, I don't want to make a decision. You already made a decision. <laughs> you, already, you already made a decision. So, <clears throat> so it's, an, it's important that uh, you know, when you talk to people that they understand. Sometimes, you know, it's hard, hard and difficult to explain to people why they need to accept Christ. Not only that, to tell them what the benefits are. Not only that, to tell them. <laughs> a lot of time we don't tell them what the ramification is if you don't accept Christ. I mean, how many times do you come to somebody and share Christ with them and tell them, you know, if you don't accept Christ, you may go to the wrong place. I mean, I, I, I don't do that. <laughs> but sometimes maybe that has to be done at certain times. I don't know. God will give us wisdom in those areas, I believe. So it says here when... <clears throat> And uh, let's go back here. I'm sorry I'm taking so long, so much of your time here. But in the, it says here, in verse 13 to 15, it says that Jesus pronounced a direct judgment on Israel. Cherimim was about a village about Two and a half miles north of Capernaum. Bethsaida was about three miles east. Both of these cities were in Galilee, and both had witnessed Jesus' ministry firsthand. That means they saw him work miracles. They saw all these things taking place. And they, <coughs> because they saw this, 
and they rejected him. Ah, it, it's, you know, things were going to take place. And then we can, uh, so there's a, like, a, you accept Christ? Okay, it's still difficult. I know when I accepted Christ, I thought everything was just great. You probably heard the story about me saying that there were all these trials and all that stuff. That, that, was, that was me because I wasn't going through any trials then. I said, I, man, I, I should have accepted Christ long ago. This is, this is great. But right after I said that, everything happened, man. <laughs> Whoa, man, it's, and it had to stop. I, I got to tell you, I have... <laughs> I don't know about you, it's like every day I have, have something that's coming up. It's like never back my mind. <laughs> What's next? That's what I keep saying. Anyway. And it says here, uh, He who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. He who hears you hears me. Hearing the messenger is the same as hearing the one who sent him. Authority resides not in the messenger, but in the person the messenger represents. The source of the message. And a couple more scriptures here, and I'll, I'll call it quits here. And I want to, it's in Luke chapter 19. It talks about, this is about Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. I, some of us have been to Jerusalem, to Israel. And uh, when I was there, I, I was thinking about when Jesus was looking at Jerusalem, where he might have been at when, he, when this taken place. I think it was like on the, where the olive trees were. But, uh, it says, now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it. Wow. If you had known, even you especially in this your day, the things that made for your, <clears throat> your peace. But now they are hidden from you, your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Extremely important. Very, very important. That's why when we, we uh, go out into the field, we need to make sure they understand the kingdom of God is right there. You're representing Jesus Jesus in you, it's in Colossians, of Jesus in you, the hope of glory. That's what we need to share. And when you do that, you're doing the work of God. You're in the harvest, and you're trying to reap for the Lord. And I think that's, that's so important. And so in Mark, just one more scripture. Bear with me, one more scripture here. Mark chapter 1. <clears throat> And we can read from the very beginning. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as is written in the prophets. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Jesus is always going to send someone before he comes, before he comes. Jesus, Jesus is faithful. He'll do it. He's going to do it. So that's what the Lord put in my heart, and I'm sorry I took up so much time, but I, I, I think I had a good time here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord bless each one of you. Praise God. Praise God.
Thank you, Brother Eddie, for the good word you shared tonight. I'm still thinking of the menudo with a pata and onions. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brother Eddie. <laughs> Praise God. You know, in uh, many of the scriptures that Brother Eddie read, we see how the Lord sent out. He was always sending out two by two and uh, to preach the gospel. Uh, and as Brother Eddie mentioned, with power that he would send. And that was the Great Commission in Mark 16 when he, he appeared to the disciples and he told them to go out. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then he told them, he who believes is, and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And then he told them about the signs that would follow them. And, uh, you know, when, when God sends out his ministers, those who go out, they preach the gospel. And wherever they go, God has already prepared where they're going to go, how they're going to preach the gospel, and what will happen. And uh, it's not in vain. Even though, as, as Brother mentioned, sometimes there's a rejection that people will not accept. But all we can do is preach the gospel, and then it's out of our hands. We preach, like a word says in, um, in Romans, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. How beautiful are the feet. So I just thank you for uh, the word that encourages us to, uh, to go out because uh, the harvest is plenty. And uh, another thing that he mentioned was that uh, sometimes we go out as lambs among wolves, as sheep among wolves. And, uh, but we need to know that we need to continue, as the disciples did, as the people of God did, to uh, bring the word of God, good tidings. No matter what, doors may be uh, closed. Maybe you've shared with relatives and uh, they didn't want to hear it. But um, the word doesn't come back in vain, right? Or void. Praise God, the Lord, the Lord is good. That was a good, uh, a good word that we received. Uh, as we close tonight uh, in prayer, as Brother Marco mentioned, he's going to be having surgery tomorrow. I would like to call him uh, for a prayer. We can lay hands upon him and his wife, Yoli, who's going to be uh, caring for him. If you want to come up, brother, and uh, we want to pray for you. I know you're trusting in the Lord, and uh, all things will turn out well. We want to pray. I want to call the leaders at this time to come and lay hands on them. And uh, you come up here and we'll pray for you. staff will do what they need to do, but you are the one that's guiding All things are in your hands, Lord. Let nothing more and nothing less be done than what needs to be done. You touch our brother. Encourage him even tonight to rest. Remove any worry or anxiety from him, from my sister, Yoli, that they will just rest in your presence and just know that they're in your hands, Lord. We pray for our brother, not only for during the surgery, but for a complete recovery. Lord, that there be no complications. And Father, you just let them shine for you, Lord. Even with our medical staff there, Lord. Father, help my brother and my sister, Lord. Give our sister Yuli strength. In the coming weeks, Lord, she will be caring for her husband, ministering to him. And you help my brother. Yes. Yes. To recover, Lord. Yes. Is any pain or discomfort? Yes. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Yes. We leave them in your hands. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. I know we usually close with um, if anybody needs any prayer. If if you need prayer at this time, we we can pray for you. If anybody, and as we close, and um, just receive the word that God has given us tonight. Praise God. And um, so, as we close, if you want to pray afterwards, you can come to one of the leaders, and, and we'll pray for you. Let's stand and pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your word, Lord. We know, Lord, there's many people that are hurting. There are many that don't know you, Lord. They need to hear the word. They need salvation, Lord. People we may know, relatives, friends, co-workers. Lord, your word is what saves, Lord. We pray for others, and you heal, Lord. We thank you tonight for the word we receive from Brother Eddie. You bless him and his family. And again, we pray for our pastor that uh, you touch him even tonight, Lord. Be with him, Lord, his family. And Lord, we continue to pray for those who are, are still mourning, who need your co uh, comforting, Lord, who need your touch, Sabayo's family, Lord. And others who, has, who have lost loved ones, Brother Reuben, Lord, Brother Freddie, Lord, many, many others, Lord. We just thank you. You bless each and every one tonight that you would give traveling mercies as we leave this place until we come back together again. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We remind you of a prayer on Saturday morning at 730. God bless you.